While going through all of my old sessions of modular recordings recently, I realized a piece I titled Vortex and released on my Modular Journey Volume 3 Bandcamp releases never was made into a video. I was pretty certain I had a video of this piece, so I went hunting. Literal days of going through terabytes of recorded material, I finally found a lousy two minute clip filmed with my phone just to send to family and friends to show off generative modular synthesis in action. I was so proud. Not because it was the most spectacular piece of Sonic Heaven I had ever heard, but because I made that three months into my journey. Modular was doing exactly what I had set out to achieve, a machine that could burp out random music indefinitely, not only for my daily entertainment, but for ideas on music to produce and eventually release. This YouTube thing was an afterthought. But here we are today, May of 2024, over 1800 subscribers to my little channel, and I had this idea. What if I tried to recreate Vortex in 2024? You know the theory, once you pull out a patch cable, that's it. The idea is gone forever. However, that's not entirely true, which is what we're going to explore today. I think a better way to state the rule is you never get exactly what you created before, because sure, randomness is always a part of this. Attenuations and modulations will definitely be different. But in principle, if you wire up the exact same module in the exact same signal flow, and dialed in as close as humanly possible to the previous values and attenuations and modulations, I am here to say you can in fact recreate old modular patches with a ton of patience. Vortex, which you are hearing right now, took me about six hours of staring at old photos of the rack on that day in October of 2021, as well as scrubbing the very short video clip I took that day to untangle the patch cables and knob placements and guess, thankfully with a tiny bit of know-how today, what the stuff hidden behind the menus might have been set to. I will take you through the whole thing right now as I rediscover Vortex in 2024. First, let's take a look at the original clip from October 2021 and see how close I got. Compared to what I have today, let's t give a couple of seconds of this. I have to say what I'm a little weirded out about is that even the little melodies in the background <laughs> sound pretty similar. And it's two years later, two and a half years later. All right, let's get on with this. First thing I have to do, of course, is unpatch the modular and reset everything to defaults so I can drag you through this process with me. goodness that is so painful but here we are at the at the beginning look at this guy still <laughs> the envelope is still going oh look at this guy too he's got little loops going on here all right so the uh let's what do we got here i've got uh, only a couple of things with some settings in them so what i want to do 
I want to reset both ornament and crimes to some default value. So in order to do that, unfortunately, I do have to power off the modular and power it back on. I'm going to have to do that twice because I've got two ornament and crimes. So hold up, bear with me. Oh, there we go. Reset. All right. All right, I'm going to reset the top one. And the other one I want to reset up here is the Pamela's Pro Workout. So I'm going to go into the uh, prom here. I'm going to go find the options. Reset all. Yes. All right. So all eight clocks are back to being just gates. And the reason why that's important is because we're going to actually go through setting up all of the channels here, all of the envelopes that I use for, for this patch from scratch. I want to start out with one fact. The tuning of each module is absolutely imperative. And I don't mean tuning to A440 or whatever. I mean they all have to be tuned to each other in whatever the hell pitch they were tuned to the day you made your masterpiece and before you yanked out all your patch cables. Almost three hours of my six hour effort was spent wondering why two of the voices sounded so dissonant and terrible. Turns out one of them was just one semitone off and the other one had an FM modulation where the source was not attenuated, so it was throwing the pitch off significantly. Let me take a quick moment to use data up here and check the few oscillators I'm gonna use for, for pitch. So the Platt's voice down here is actually supposed to be in, uh, in F. And, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to be using Eloquencer up here as a keyboard, as a, as a literally a 12 step keyboard here to play a couple of notes manually. I'm going to tap them out because that's what I did in the previous demo. So if I, if I select the, you know, what is supposed to be the F note here, now you can see uh, Platts is in, in fact tuned to F like it's supposed to be. And then we have uh, Ensemble is also tuned to F and Chainsaw, the sub is tuned to F and let's go one more here. The other melody is, it's close. It's pretty close. Let me, uh, let me see if I can wind that down a little bit. This I might have to adjust after we get some, uh, some CV going into it because I'm not sure what it was trying to do. But this circuit over here is going to be just some melody that plays in the background. Yeah, so rings I'm going to tune separately. After I get that circuit patched up, I'll get back to tuning rings because I I don't think I'm actually using rings volt per octave. I think back in October of 2021, those were the only oscillators I had. I had plats, I have ensemble, the two chainsaws, and I had rings. Oops, rings up here. So that's all I'm going to be using in this in this patch. I didn't have all this other stuff up here. So anyway, moving forward, here we go. I made a complete shambles of my wires, so I'm <laughs> my OCD might make me stop what I'm doing right now and fix my wires. So we're ready to start patching here, and I'm going to start up here in the corner with my clocks and randoms and molts and things that I usually start with. So let me start by setting up my favorite circuits. Starting with Pamela's Pro Workout up there in the corner, which is standing in for Pamela's new workout, which is up here in the uh, sequencer rack. I am not going to use any of Pro's advanced features, just shapes and level offsets, probability, and one quantizer for that channel that's doing the FM, FM quantizing of rings, for instance. So let's start here. I'm going to configure all eight of Pamela's Pro Workout outputs that I'm going to use throughout the, the patch here. So bear with me while I do some menu diving. So channel one is going to be a divided by 16 speed. And I'm going to go in and change it to a triangle shape. And no other settings on this channel. Channel 2 is going to be a divided by 64 monster. That's a nice slow one. 
And I'm gonna make this shape random, a random wave shape, like this, like a sample and hold. And this one, I'm gonna change the level to 25%. And so what this means is only generate 25% of the uh, maximum voltage that you could do, zero to five volts. I think it's zero to five volts in Pamela's. And then I'm gonna offset that. So instead of it doing zero to one volt, I'm gonna ask it to uh, to go from from two to three, for instance, by, by bumping up the, the offset to 20%. So all I'm doing is telling it to move whatever you're generating up a little higher in, in, in pitch. And then I'm gonna set quantize to a major scale. And that's so, that's so whatever voltage it, do, it does generate is at least in a major scale quantization. And again, that channel two is going to come to the FM jack of rings later. So that we want it to kind of stay in tune a little, as, as good as we can anyway. All right, Pamela's three is a divided by 16. And its shape is going to be random as well. No other settings. And these are all experimental. What I'm setting right now, from the dividers to the uh, even the shapes and the ranges, it's all experimental. I'm setting it to this initially, and then we're going to change it as we're developing the patch. Next channel is a divided by 48. And this one is an exponential ramp down. I think that's what that is. And again, no other settings yet. We'll get, we'll mess with that later. Channel five, is it divided by 32? With a slew random shape. So this is a sample and hold, and this would be a slew of the same kind of thing. And this one, we're gonna set a level of 30%. an offset of 10. And again, this is all initial. We'll experiment as we go. So those first five channels are all going to modulate pretty much everything down here in rings. So that's what those were. Channel six is a divided by 48. Actually, both six and seven are both divided by 48s. Six is a random pattern, so it's another sample and hold here. And I'm gonna leave it at a full 100% level and 0% offset to start with, but we'll change it later as we go. And over to seven is just a gate on and off, and it's gonna be a slow gate. So these two are going to go over here, all the way over here to monsoon. And uh, one of them is probably gonna, I think it's gonna modify either position or density or something in monsoon. And then the other one is just gonna turn on and off the freeze very slowly turn on and off freeze. Normally I would take my channel eight out of Pamela's here right into random trigger gate to uh, add pulses to trigger these, but I'm gonna instead, I'm gonna take this all the way up here to Kara, which is marbles, a marbles clone. So let's wire up that first as our first official patch just to something here. So because this signal represents a clock or a gate of sorts, I tend to use white wires because this just helps me see them in the, in the grand scope of things a little easier. So I'm going to take this out one times. So we're not modifying the uh, speed of this channel. It's just going to be 120 beats per minute out of channel eight. It's going to come up here to the T side of marbles. So I think it's this clock up here. And you see how marbles stopped ticking. Well, you can almost see it <laughs> right up here. Marbles kind of stopped ticking because now it has a clock input. If I turn on the clock, marbles runs. If I turn off the clock, marbles stops. So once I've told marbles how fast I want it to run, I'm now going to use the T1 out of marbles to actually do the clocking here in the random trigger gate. So the R112 here is a random trigger gate module that takes a pulse in for either trigger or gate. You can clock them actually separately. So here's two triggers that, that get triggered, or here's three gates that could get triggered, and you can actually 
pulse them, time them separately if you want to. I'm just using one at the top, and of course it normals down. And using Marbles T1 means that while the R112 gets pulses, it gets them intermittently based on the speed and bias of T coming out of Marbles. So all that means is when Marbles decides to trigger T1 based on its bias and speed, then Random Trigger Gate gets its go ahead to try to randomly roll up some, some randoms here for gates and triggers. So in the end, what I wind up with is even less randomness in the R112 trigger and gate, which goes then to the S090 dual probability skipper right next to it, which is one of my favorite modules ever. Now I'm going to take a T1 out of random trigger gate right next door to the dual probability skippers in Jack. In the random chance that the R112 generates a trigger here, it will then send it to the skipper next door, and then based on its probability, the skipper will either ignore it or send it through to this output, which goes to wherever we're going next. And so that's what this knob here does. This is fully counterclockwise, is like 0% chance that anything is going to generate, or all the way up, you know, the higher it goes, the higher the percent chance that it's going to generate a, a gate or trigger. Let me see if I can demonstrate that by turning on the clock. So now if you can keep an eye on the trigger signal here, the little red light that's blipping, and then you see over here with a 100% probability, Skipper is opening up a gate here, so or a trigger as well. The lower you make this setting, this, this potentiometer here, the lower percentage you give, this one is still generating its triggers, but this one only periodically will open. Probabilistically. <laughs> I love that word. And there are two probability skippers in this <laughs> dual probability skipper module. The first one is getting the gate in or the trigger in here. But you, if you, you can also gate another one in here or trigger another one in here. But if you don't, it normals down through, of course. And it should have a different a different output than the top one. Anyway. So the clock to the random trigger gate to the dual probability skipper is probably my favorite circuit in all of modular because I absolutely love random. And that's why I have two random trigger gates and dual probability skippers. The other one is up there in the uh, sequencer rack. We then take the skipper one out over here to the ornament and crime trigger one. An ornament and crime is in the peaked app, which gives me four separate envelope generators. For this experiment, I'm just going to trigger all four envelopes off of T1 for simplicity, but you could run four completely unique trigger pulses to this little module and have it generate envelopes any way you wish. For my second, T trigger here out of random trigger gate. I'm going to plug that into skipper channel two. So it's it's actually triggering differently. Then I'm gonna come out of skipper two all the way down here to Batumi into the, the row that says uh, reset. Because what I want to do is randomly and slowly, I want to reset all the LFOs that are being generated by Batumi which is going to be a bunch of them. So again, we're going to we're going to experiment with this, but this is what I want to do to start with and see how it sounds. I'm going to turn the probability kind of low as well. On the subject of Batumi, there's two things I want to talk about here with this little potty little sidecar here. Uh, the, the the reset and sync row here is toggled by this switch up here. I want it to be in reset mode because I want this input to reset all the LFOs. And then down here we have a saw shape LFO, but I have it in trapezoid mode, so it's gonna it's gonna kind of be a, a different a different shaped LFO from just a regular rising saw edge. So that's it for my clocks and randoms. So let's start making some noise. The first voice consists of two modules. It starts with the Platts macro oscillator, which is the actual noise maker. And then we're going to take the output of that into rings into its input to be resonated. 
So it's a different thing. I'm not, I'm not sure I knew what I was doing back in the day, but it actually turned out to sound pretty cool. So the first thing I want to do is simulate what I did with the System 8 keyboard. I'm going to use Eloquencer up here at the top. Let me start by just taking the CV out of, out of Eloquencer. Down here to Platt's uh, Volt Per Octave. I'm going to take the gate out of Eloquencer. Down here to Ring's uh, Strum. Right there. So now whenever I touch a note here on this on this keyboard of Eloquencer in live mode play. That's all I'm really using it for. I'm not using it as a sequencer. I'm using it as a keyboard. When I tap a note here, it's going to set, set the volt per octave, so the pitch of plats, and it's going to strum rings, and that'll give me my resonation. From there, I take an output of plats over here to rings in, of course. And now my notes say that I used a mult for this, but I'm not sure that I stayed with that, but we'll set it up that way to start with and see what happens. I'm gonna take a level out of plats over here to my mult, because I think there's something I was planning to do here and I'm gonna have to get to this point in the patch before I realize why I did that. I think it's because I want to split the, uh, the signal that's actually coming from above. I think I want to split it to strum and split it to level, but we'll see. We'll see what I wanted to do there. I now want to take one of those trapezoids out of Batumi to modulate the morph setting of plats. Now when I'm LFOing things, I usually use red wires, and again, this is all just so I can quickly find them when I'm staring at the sea of spaghetti. So the trapezoid, because I'm set over here, over to the trapezoid shape of the saw out of Batumi, down here to morph. And the Platt's morph knob is set to 10 o'clock, and the Platt's morph attenuator is set to 2 o'clock. Timbre on Platt's is set to 1 o'clock-ish, you know, one thirty-five, if you will. <laughs> and the octave, if you hold down the right button on Platt's, you set the octave. I have the octave here set to the third from the top, so it's a C6, possibly. That's all for the Platt's voice for now, since the output is going over here to rings in for the main pitches to resonate. First, the rings parameters, because there's a lot of them. I didn't move them, so they're, they're pretty much in the position that they're going to be, but let me read them off. Uh, rings mode is both of them are green. Rings frequency adjust to taste, but right around 1130 o'clock, <laughs> my notes say, is working right now. So that's this one up here. Frequency attenuator right next to it is set to around two o'clock. Rings shape is the same as frequency, and the shape attenuator is also at two o'clock. Rings brightness is just above noon, Brightness attenuator is at 10 o'clock. Ring's damp is just below noon, and damp attenuator is at 2 o'clock. Ring's position is at 2 o'clock, and position attenuator is at 9.32 a.m., not p.m. Part of what I think makes the ring's voice work as a dynamic background tone are the modulations coming from Pamela's workout. Using Pam's 1 through 5 here, all of them are going to come down here to these modulation points in rings. So let's set those up now. And I need five wires. Are these going to be long enough? Yes. Well, hang on, I'm selecting colors. Colors are important. So Pamela's, Pamela's 1 is coming to brightness down here. Pamela's 2 it's coming to frequency, or FM. That's why we set that to a quantized sample and hold. Pamela's three is coming to the damp modulator. Pamela's four is coming to position. Where's, where's position? Where, I lost it. Oh, there it is. Oops, I'm off one here. And then Pamela's five comes right down to, I said five. <laughs> Pamela's five comes down here to shape. All right, so that's all of those. So if you recall, the brightness channel here is 
is set to a divided by 16. The frequency, FM frequency, is which is a sample and hold that's limited in its range of how much sample it can hold, <laughs> is currently a clock divided by 64. Another thing we could do is we could edit that channel later as we're experimenting and change channel two to also do some probability. So that way it, it's similar to Skipper in a way where it probabilistically will not change the note. The damping is, again, channel 3, which is a divided by 16 of the random shape, and channel 4 is a clock divided by 48, whose shape is an exponential ramp down with no other settings, and then Pamela's 5 is a clock divided by 2 with a slew random with some level and offsets, which we can experiment with later. And then, of course, up from above, we have the gate coming out of the B channel of Eloquencer down here to strum rings. So next thing we do to, in order to hear it is we have to come out of rings, left and right, way the hell over here to monsoon. Let me grab my usual left, right, green and yellows that I use. We're just gonna run them all the way over here to monsoon. Just to finish the audio circuit, I'm going to take monsoon out down here to the performance mixer. Uh, what is it? Channel 9. So let me backtrack just one moment. I might put this right back the way it was. But let me use this gate into a mulch right here for just a moment. And I'm going to split that out of the mulch over here to strum. Because what I want what I want to do, just a sample, to get one sound playing <laughs> in this very long video, I'm going to hit a note up here now and hopefully we'll hear something. Perfect. Let's switch this over to level. So if you remember from that demo clip earlier, the comparative clip from 2021, I, re I went over to the System 8 and I just tapped a couple of notes. So that's all this is supposed to represent. Now I want to modulate Monsoon. There's a bunch of stuff going on over here as well. So I'm going to take a couple of wires out of Oct right here, and, uh, and I'm going to do some modulations up at Monsoon. All right, so I'm going to patch out uh, our modulation into Monsoon's size here, and I'm going to use a pretty slow modulation from Oct. And that's just going to keep the grains from, it's going to keep the grains growing and shrinking in size. So they're going to sound washy or they'll sound real staccato, depending on where it is in the, in the LFO cycle. I'm going to take another pretty slow oct LFO and I'm going to put it into the wet dry mix here of Monsoon. So that again, it's going to sway back and forth as far as whether the grains are there or they're not. And it's going to do it very slowly. I'll take a little faster LFO out of Oct. Here, number five. And over here, number five. I want to sweep the texture value here of, of Monsoon. And all that does, I believe, is just make the grains again a little grittier or a little more smooth. And now I'm going to take six and seven out of Pamela's Pro workout over here. And these will come over to Monsoon's position and freeze. So remember I left seven as just a gate, a very slow opening and closing gate. So I'm going to plug that into freeze over here. And then this one is another slow moving one that's going to go into position. And these are all things 
all of these are modulation points we can we can experiment with once the patch is up and running and you have something you can look and listen to. You see freeze is on? Freeze is on right now, so <laughs> the notes are stuck. All right. So that kind of wraps up the first voice in our series here. We have plats to rings to monsoon and uh, a bunch of modulations going on, a ton of modulations going on. So uh, the, the next voice we're going to do is ensemble here. Ensemble is set up as my favorite sound in all of modular the Vangelis brass patch that I got from State Azure's Folding Space. I love this brassy oscillator, and I'm using Kara, which is Marble's clone, for pitches to both pitch and root on Ensemble. Let's talk about how Marble's is set up. I have the rate set at about 3 o'clock up here. I have the Deja Vu set at 9 o'clock-ish. Again, these are all experimental settings you change as the patch evolves. Spread I have at 9 o'clock as well. Bias for T, I'm going to set at 9 o'clock. The length is, of course, 16. The bias for X is at 9 o'clock as well. Jitter, I'm going to set up to 2 o'clock. Step here is set to about 2 o'clock as well. As we set up earlier, we took a Pamela's Pro workout. 8 is coming up here to time the module for the marbles module for the T side using a one times pulse. Then we come out of T1 from marbles over to random trigger gate. That's how that whole circuit is working over there. The X side of marbles or Kara is the pitches that are going to come out of here. So I'm going to take a cable out of X1 and X2 down into ensemble pitch and root. I'm going to take a sine wave out of Batumi here, the B channel again, all the way up here to Marble's spread. So spread, the attenuator set at 9 o'clock, so all this sine wave is going to do with a limited range of LFO, it's just going to move the spread, you know, plus and minus from wherever it's set on the attenuator. As for the ensemble settings, I have the scale is set to 1. I have the spread set to 9 o'clock, so there's a couple of oscillators active. Balance is set to right around 1 o'clock, so that's more pitch than it is root. The root knob is right around 1 o'clock, but again, it's, it's variable. We're going to change it as we go. Cross FM is very little, very little, because this is a this is a hot topic here. <laughs> this guy makes a lot of noise. Twist is at zero, because we're going to modulate that later. Detune is around right around 10 o'clock, and then warp is at 9 o'clock. And again, we're going to we're going to mess with all this stuff later. All right, so here's where some of the fun stuff comes in. <laughs> I get to start using some of my envelopes. I'm going to come out of peaked. B, which is ornament and crime up here, the B channel, and I'm going to come down here to the twist modulation on ensemble. You should be able to see the screen here on ornament and crime because we're going to come in here and do some modifications to these settings in here now. Because remember at the beginning of it all, I reset everything. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to first change it to an ADSR envelope shape. And the only setting I'm going to change here on the ADSR side is the attack. I'm going to make it a very long attack. So 250, almost maximum. And then decay and sustain and release are all at their default of 128, which is 50%. And then back over here on Batumi, we're going to take the trapezoid saw D down here to cross FM. So again, this is now going to modulate very little of the cross FM. That's why we kept the knob pretty low, so that way this, this LFO is going to only change it a little bit. Ensembles A out and B out here are going to come up to my one of my VCAs. My dope for VCAs. 
And I'm going to set the gain uh, at about 9 o'clock so a little bit of the sound still seeps through even if, the, if there's no CV opening that, that gate. So to shape the opening of this VCA over here, I'm going to use uh, port A here or output A of the uh, Ornament Crime, the Peaked app. This one is going to be a little bit different shape. Uh, we're setting this to an ADSAR envelope shape. So that is an attack, decay, sustain, attack again, and then release. So the shape kind of looks like this. We're triggering it off of trigger one. Of course, we're going to do a decay and release reset all the way down here to SLP. All right, and we're going to set the ADSR to be 200, 200, 100, and 200, respectively. 200. One hundred and two hundred. All right. God, I'm glad I'm not doing this live. And this, according to my notes, I'm actually going to run this through data. So hold on a moment. Let's do that. <laughs> I guess I wanted to watch the envelopes. So I'm just going to jump a little, little shorty over here to data. What, uh, what data? Data C. I wonder why I did that. Then we'll come out of data here over to that VCA then I take just a summed out of the VCA so I'm not doing individual channels here I'm going to take a sum down here to Pico Pico DSP as my effects and then to finish this audio path we're coming out of Pico DSP right down into channel 10 of the performance mixer And that guy sounds like this. And as far as how to set the effects, you just season to taste whatever you want them to be. I like big reverb, so I, I have big tails hanging out here. So that's neat. So that's our <laughs> that's our first two voices. What are we about ten hours into this <laughs> this film? All right, it's going to get easier from here, I think, because it's chainsaw. Chainsaw is always pretty easy to work with. So this is another very common voice I use in a lot of my patches, and that is a chainsaw to Belgrad monster roar sub bass thingy. I absolutely love this sound so much. This one's pretty simple compared to the other ones. The left out of chainsaw right up here to the in of Belgrad. Uh, chainsaw, as you saw in the beginning of this, we tuned it to F1, so it's pretty low. I'm going to do full counterclockwise detune because we're going to modulate it later and then fully counterclockwise on shape because I want it to be a saw. For my Belgrad setup, this is a, again typical for me. I have the level turned all the way up. I have the span set at around 11 o'clock. I have the mod switch set to SM, which I believe is self-modulation. The frequency is right at about 3 here. The resonance is at, uh, is at 2 o'clock. The mode knob here is set to position 7, which is dual peak. That is my favorite setting for this. And then balance is around 11 o'clock. I want to use a sine wave out of Batumi C. I'm going to take it up here to, to data. Because again, I want to watch it. And then I want to come out of data back down here to the FM jack of Belgrade, and uh, I'm setting the slider to around eight. 
So it's almost all the way at the top. If you're looking up here at data, you can see the blue trace up here is the modulation of the frequency of the filter, which of course is going to raise and lower the cutoff. And you'll see that because we have this reset plugged in here, you'll see it's not actually making a full sine wave shape that it should because the reset triggers and causes it to, to start over again. So that's when we're going to probably do some modifications to our randoms over there. Because right now I have a lot of randoms burping out, so the probability is pretty high. And we're going to change that towards the end of all of this to be a little bit... Let that sine wave actually be a sine wave once in a while. We're coming out of Belgrade right next door here to Talon. That's our VCA that we're going to use. The gain is set just below 12 o'clock and I have the switch set to symmetrical. I have a second ornament in crime down here also set to peaked mode. I'm going to come out of the B channel of that up here to Talon's linear setting. So that's going to be the envelope I'm going to shape for Talon to open and close for uh, this Belgrade channel. I'm going to change this to a really crazy <laughs> algorithm. We're going to change this to attack decay, attack loop two, and then release. So what that means for this envelope is it's going to attack, decay, attack, and then decay, attack, and then release. It's really complicated. It's pretty complicated stuff in here. And inside the channel configurations, I'm going to I want to trigger this off of the end of chain of A, which I haven't set up yet, but I will in a moment. Down here in the mults, so there's an attack, decay, and release mult option in every one of these channels. So I'm going to set the attack and the release both to four. So what that's going to do is make it even slower. And then I'm going to do the, uh, let's see, we're going to attack, attack reset and decay reset to none because we want the envelopes to play fully out. And as for the actual envelope itself, we're going to set the attack slope to, to 200, decay to 150, because we want it to go a little slower. Sustain will stay at the default of 128, and then release, we're going to go to 220. We're going to make that a real long tail. I'm going to take this envelope out up to data, data D channel before coming over here to Talon. And again, the reason for that is just to watch the pretty shapes on data. It's not actually changing the sound any. It just gives me something to watch. Talon's out is pretty simple. We're just coming straight out of Talon down here to the, the uh, mixer channel one. And it's panned in the center right now. I wanna send some of this signal to an AUGS bus. So I'm gonna jack that up to around 60% and make it a pre-fade. So even though we're going to be listening to the sound of the sub, it's also going to be fed into this big reverb. So let me wire that one up real quick, because it's actually not in my notes for some reason. So out of Performance Mixer's AUGS Send 1, over here to FX Aid, and then to bring this back into the mix, I'm not going to do an FX return, I'm instead going to feed it into channel 8 of the mixer. So again, I have total control over how much of that return <laughs> that I'm going to be listening to. So let's see if we can make this one make noise. What's happening? Why is this not working? Oh, I, end, end of chain. So where's that written down? Oh, fuck, I didn't write that down. All right, so we're at a point where I screwed something up. I didn't write something down, so I'm going to have to wing it. <laughs> there was this thing I had to do here where I wanted to trigger the channel B off of channel A when channel A came to an end, but I don't have anything written down for what channel A was or how it gets triggered. What I think I did was I just came out of a gate of random trigger gate up there and triggered a TR1 here, so let's do that. And this is one of those where I'm probably going to have to fake it <laughs> until I make it. So we're coming out of a gate all the way down here. And uh, I think the whole point of what I was trying to do was, I think I wanted to get it to act like a envelope generator where it loops. Because this one thing that Ornament and Crime does, you know, the peaked app doesn't have 
is like a, like Quadigy had a way to, you just had a free running uh, envelope that would just loop itself constantly. So if, in order to do that in Ornament and Crime, I think I have to use end of chain events and then keep it perpetually looping somehow that way. So let's see. Let's start with this and we'll see what happens when we get there. Right now, this ornament in crime should probably loop pretty, pretty frequently. All right, so I hear a little noise. I'm going to crank up the gain on the performance mixer. All right, so here's our sub. So if you can see down here in the lower right, I'm uh, on channel eight of the mixer is the return of the effect coming from FX aid. to go. <laughs> it's not quite there because once I get everything put together, we're going to have to tweak it a bit, but it's pretty close. I don't like the, uh, the, the sub, how it's dropping out completely. It seems like it's too much. That's a little better. So what I did is I brought the slider down, the amount down on Batumi, but then brought the cutoff up. And see how it's still going away completely? It's not supposed to go away completely. But now I think that is actually our envelope's fault down here. We'll mess with that a little bit later. Let's build the last voice. The last voice is my second chainsaw, and it's going to do, again, what some of my earliest shenanigans with chainsaw is it's a, it's a stereo oscillator, but the filters are only mono, so I take left and right into two separate cinnamon filters. So let's wire that up. Here's left and right. Right over here to the input of the filters, left and right filters. I need to take from marbles way up top again. I'm gonna take the X3 out of marbles, so that's the last pitch out of marbles, into the pitches of chainsaw, bolt per octave. So the cinnamon filter settings over here are as follows. Cinnamon one is at cutoff about 11 o'clock, a resonance about two o'clock, the drive switch is turned on, and the level is around noon. The second cinnamon settings over here are pretty similar. The cutoff is at two o'clock, so that, that way the left and right ears are a little bit different in, in their sound. Resonance is still at two o'clock, drive is on, and level is again at noon. Both cinnamon filters will come out of the low pass output. And we're going to come up here to a VCA. And once again, we're gonna set the gain up a little bit so we can hear a little bit seeping through and we'll tune, we'll tune to taste as we get this going. 
I'm using one and three, so I'll be using these two knobs here, two CVs here. All right, we're in the home stretch, <laughs> coming out of peaked C up here at the top, right over here to data A, just so I can, again, watch the, the pretty envelope that come out of data down here or right over to the CV jack. But because this is not set up in stereo mode, I do have to use a stack cable to jump it. So all that really means is I'm taking the same signal and splitting it to go into two different CV jacks. I could use a mult as well, but I'm not. So now I have this envelope, the envelope coming out of C is going to come over here and open this VCA. But now I have to change the peaked channel C change it to an ADSR. ADSR triggered off trigger one. I want to reset SP for both. It's going to be another really slow envelope. Attack 200, decay 200, sustain at 128 and release at 200. So now we have our final envelope showing up here on data. It is coming over here to this VCA to open and close. I'm going to preserve the stereo on this one. And again, it's going to be another big reverb. On 2HP verb, I have the time set to around 4 o'clock, the damp set to around 2 o'clock, and the mix set to around 2 o'clock as well. And then 2HP Verb is going to come out down here to the mixer on channel 3 and 4. So again, outs of 2HP Verb, down here to channels 3 and 4. And because this is going to be a stereo sound, I'm going to pan channels 3 and 4 left and right. And then I want to use some gain here to boost it up a little bit louder so I can hear it. From this point on, it's just going to be about massaging and changing things to be the way you want them to be in the patch. Because all the sounds are there, I mean, I can hear all the sounds are there, and most of the sounds are these sharp little tones that rise and fall, the rumbling bass that rises and falls everything going through pretty massive reverbs and effects over here and now it's just a matter of fine-tuning every sound to to sound the way you want it to so i don't know about you but this sounds pretty good i mean it sounds pretty close to what we did considering i pulled every single patch cable out and did a hard reset of both the clock modules and the envelope generators those are the only ones that kind of store their knowledge when you turn off the modular and here we are, we're back to kind of what it sounded like in the beginning. There's there's some tweaks I could probably do, but I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do that. The ultimate goal of this very long video, this patch from scratch, is to show what we started with, what we were comparing ourselves to in the beginning, and then how we can rebuild, truthfully rebuild, a pretty close to similar sounding patch all over again and bust the myth that you can never have the same sound again in your modular.
I guess I can shoehorn in here also. I know that a lot of the similar sound effects that, I, that are going on are in fact the effects. I got a, I got a couple of really big reverbs in here, which makes things sound a lot better <laughs> just by themselves. But it's also the tones, the tones that are playing, like the, the bass that's growling and coming in and going. Uh, although it's going more than it's coming and I need to figure out why. And then some of the melody horns that are blasting are blasting a little too much. But again, though, that's just shaping the envelopes a little better and then working on the triggers up there. That's one thing we can probably try. There's a button on the, on the R112 that sets like a normal or low or high probability of triggers triggering. And right now it's at high because I wanted it to burp a lot of triggers out in order to show things off. But if I switch that back to a medium kind of probability, a normal probability, uh, things will slow down a little bit. Some of the some of the triggers will slow down. This is now going to turn into probably two or three more days of me messing around with every little parameter to make make something sound uh, reasonable <laughs> or good, at least good to me. So uh, this was a long one, and I really appreciate you. If you stuck around and listened to this whole thing, I really appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'm going to let this play out for a minute, and then I guess we're going to call this patch from scratch done. And, uh, and we'll call it Myth Busted. How's that? All right, we need to wrap this up. I'm, uh, I'm starting to babble. It is 3 o'clock in the morning, and I am super tired. And, uh, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm getting a little delirious, so <laughs> thank you for hanging out till the end, and uh, take care, everyone. <laughs>